Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now just a quick message before we get on with this video, the time this is released to you guys, I will actually be heading home from Seas, the South East Arachnid Show. So if you want to see the film footage of Seas and what cool pickups I might be getting, make sure to pop back on Wednesday and on Sunday for those videos. Now today's video, as you would have already guessed by the title above, we are going to be making a super premium bug grub, full of goodness to gut load your feeder insects and it's also great for isopod food too. Now there is nothing wrong with sticking to the cheap and simple methods of homemade bug grub, but I'm experimenting here and so far I've had some pretty good results. So let's head off to the kitchen now and prepare this bug grub. Welcome to the kitchen. So the main tool you are going to need is a blender. It doesn't matter if you're using a hand blender or a big blender, or a small blender, as long as it blends, right? Now, normally for a base of things like bug grub, people will use dog biscuits, they will use um, various cereals. Now I am sticking to the cereal side, but we're gonna be going for a brand-based product. So I've just got some cheap, brand flakes. You can use all brand, you can use more expensive ones if you wish, but there's no harm in using cheap and nasty brand. So if this is high in iron, it's high in fibre. So first of all, we're going to blend up the base and then you can see what's added next. So don't have to measure it, tip it in willy-nilly. Now as this is the main base, I'm filling the entire jug for the blender full of this, because when it's blended down, it will decrease. There, as you see, it's condensed right down. So let's go on to our next ingredient. So next we're gonna be adding in this stuff. Now this, if you didn't know, is a sort of maize corn flour type thing. And the reason we're going to be using this is because I've noticed that in a lot of commercially bought isopod premium foods, they use this as one of the bases. Now I'm not sure fully on the reason why, but perhaps it's because it's full of vitamin B12, among many other things. So, in it goes. So what I've placed in here is just a layer to go along the top. And it's as simple as that. Now the next ingredient is something that I experimented with in a previous bug grub and it seemed to work. Black eye beans or black eye peas as some people call them. Now I own these for bean weevils. So if you have a bean weevil culture, you'll know all about these. Now these are actually really super nutrient rich. So there's no harm in adding these to the grub and I did it as an experiment as I said before and it seemed to work quite well. Again, I've just added a simple layer along the top. Now you don't have to worry about things being a fine powder, it's just to kind of break them up a bit so that they're easier to consume. Now we're going for the final ingredients of this bug grub and this is something that I've been doing quite a bit of research into to looking at the properties of these things and it's going to be a whole mix. Let me prepare that for you and I will explain. So here is our final mixture. Now if you haven't already guessed this is a mixture of various seeds and I'm going to tell you why I've chosen these particular seeds. Now these littler ones here are sesame seeds, the little whiter ones. Now you can pick these up really cheap and they are a great source of calcium. So especially if you are feeding reptiles or isopods, things like that, calcium is really important. Now these bigger greener ones are your pumpkin seeds, packed with B vitamins, iron and zinc. And the zinc actually helps process carbs, fats and proteins. So that's gonna be really, really handy to break things down. 
Now, I can't really see them because I only put a very small amount in, but somewhere near the bottom there are a few dill seeds. Now this is more of a, a spice, which is why I've used a very, very small amount. And the reason I've done that is because dill, again, is really, really easy and cheap to pick up. And it's a great infection fighter. So if your feeders are eating the, the bits of dill and that goes into your reptiles or your inverts, it will especially help prevent any kind of infection, bacteria growth and things like that. So it's always going to be really handy. And last but not least, these sort of burgundy brown ones are lime seed. Now I've put these in because they've got an overall health benefit. Now, especially in humans, they can help with like cholesterol, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, blood pressure and so on. Now I know those kind of things work differently within some of our animals, but they do have a general health benefit. And I think that by adding that in there, it's gonna cause no harm. If anything, it may aid in your reptiles or inverts that consume them. And any of these nutrients that are not properly absorbed by the animals will just come out in their poo or their frass anyway. So you really can't go wrong by adding them in. So I'm actually just gonna do a very short blend of these. I'm not gonna blend them right in. We're gonna kind of leave some of these seeds just loose in there. Word of advice, don't use a wide bowl when you're trying to put it in something smaller because they've just gone all over my side. Three, two, one. And here it is. It's got chunks in it and it's got fine powders around the edge. It's a really good texture overall for your feeders. It has the same sort of consistency as your commercial bug grubs, but probably with a lot better health benefits. So to end this video off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna present some of this in a little bowl and put it in the isopod and cockroach enclosure that I have up in the realm. And we're gonna see if they swarm it, ignore it, or just the odd few come over and feed now and again. Now my isopods take much, much quicker to wet foods such as cucumber and fruits and things. So putting the dry food in is going to be a real experiment. Normally with my cheaper plain bug grub, I get the odd few will jump on the top, eat a bit and go off because they're always provided with food. There's no starvation with these isopods and cockroaches. So yeah, let's put a dish in. Give it 10 minutes, come back and have a look and see if they found it. Oh, I just carried their tank down the stairs. It's actually sat here, but just so you know, I'm not faking it. Here we are. That's exactly what it looks like. Let's pop it in and see what happens, shall we? So there it is on its side. You can see they've already got their other dinner scraps here, which I actually have to remove by the end of the day before they go a bit funny. So we've got no one that's jumped to the chase yet. We're gonna come back in 10 minutes and see if these guys like their food. It has now been exactly 10 minutes from the moment I shut the camera off last. My phone is going off in the background, I do apologize. And we're gonna go and scroll down and have a look. Three, Two, one, look at that, whoa, whoa, now that has got to be a success right, look at them all, so we've had none of the roaches appear yet, but a lot of them stay in hiding until it's much later in the day anyway, but the isopods, they have taken to that well. So guys, this is actually the first time I've tried this exact recipe in with my isopods. It's been mostly research based. Um, I have attempted it with my red runner roaches and they took quite well to it too. But yeah, what a success. What an absolute success. I am well over the moon with that.